for your assistance in developing and sharing this program. Our team at USBC, as well as our 20 Navigator Chambers, look forward to being a resource to you and your business as you navigate through this journey. Before we introduce today's guest, I encourage you, please drop your questions in the chat, and we will address as many as possible at the end of today's webinar. Today, we welcome back our very special guest, Katrina M. Kraft. Ms. Katrina is a CPA and business financial advisor with over 200 years of, not 200 years, 20 <laughs> years of experience. That'd be a lot of experience in accounting, tax, and business strategy. Katrina has been a part of several startup companies as well as Fortune 500 companies. This wide range of experience has given her a deep understanding of how businesses operate, which she now utilizes as a financial advisor to help many small businesses grow. With tax season right around the corner, it's important to ensure that your company is best positioned to take advantage of changes in the tax law and available credits to help reduce your tax exposure. Today, Katrina is going to walk us through the preparation of how to optimize your small business tax planning and minimize your tax liability. Um, Katrina, we are so happy to have you here. We know you're going to help us understand deductions and credit to proper record keeping and planning and it goes on and on i saw your deck um you're covering a lot but most importantly to us here at usbc we know it's very very important to gain access to capital we have to have our taxes up to date so welcome thank you the floor is yours katrina thank you can everyone see my screen Awesome. Well, thank you for joining today. I know a lot of people are not interested in talking about taxes. So I'm glad that you see the importance and the essential tax strategies for small and medium sized businesses, how it could really impact your bottom line. So today I just want to go over uh, the disclaimer to let you know that this presentation is for informational purposes only, and it's not intended to be substituted for your specific accounting or tax financial advice. I'm gonna give you some overviews on deductions that you may be able to take, but it's really gonna depend on what type of business you have and your entity structure and your financial life. The first question I want to ask is, are you confident you're taking advantage of every available tax break? The tax code and its supplemental documents are over 60,000 pages. So how in the world can you be sure you're taking all of the deductions available? Are you getting tax and investment advice from your advisors about saving on taxes? And are you ready to stop overpaying your taxes? We don't want to continue overpaying taxes if you are legally able to deduct a tax. Do it. Do not be afraid, but you need to know the law and you need to be able to back up with the tax code what that deduction is. So we're going to talk about some of those today. The Supreme Court Justice with a 33 year tenure said there is nothing wrong with a strategy to avoid the payment of taxes. So we're not talking about something where you're trying to cheat or you're trying to deceive. We're talking about using the tax code to your benefit. And the Internal Revenue Code really benefits a lot of business owners. Business owners, small and medium size, make up almost 50% of the employees. So it is very important for the IRS to incentivize small and medium sized businesses because they are the ones that are generating the economy. That is why the tax code is so important to learn and see how it could benefit you and your business. Welcome, Tiffany gave a great presentation and introduction for me that I really assist business owners. I help improve, improve their profitability, help make better manage their cash. So better cash management decisions and also 
entity should my business form? This webinar, as Tiffany mentioned, is really packed. And if I do not get to number two, which is what entity should my business form, I will be having a second presentation and I will show you how you can register for that at the end of this presentation. Let's begin by asking why tax planning? Tax planning means you're looking forward to minimize your taxes, not just recording history. A bookkeeper records history. An accountant looks at history and what's recorded. But when we're talking about planning, we're looking forward. It's before tax season begins. So right now is really the planning time. November, October, November, December is a great time to plan and because there are certain tax deductions I'm going to talk about today that you may be able to put into your business and take as a deduction. It's not April 15th. That's the deadline to file. At that time, most of the de deductions you can take are gone, except there is one for a retirement plan that you can do up until your filing date. But all other deductions, it is too late. So planning is looking forward. Start planning now, and that's what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to talk about, can I take this business deduction? The IRS says that you can take any business deduction that's ordinary and necessary. I know that's kind of vague, but ordinary means it's common and accepted in your trade or business. And necessary means it's helpful and appropriate for your trade or business. So it really depends on the facts and circumstances. I want to give you an example and why it is important to work with a tax preparer and an accountant who knows your trade or business. I am an accountant. And if I do certain things like go to yoga and try to write it off, it would not be a deduction for me. But if you have an exercise instructor that is taking a yoga class, that could be research for her, her, or it could be her or him, or it could be training and development. That's why it could be ordinary in your trade of business, but not everyone's trade of business. And then is it necessary? Necessary and helpful means there is a training in your state. And then there's a training in Puerto Rico for the same exact training, but you decide to go to Puerto Rico. Is that really necessary? Or are you trying to really just take a, a trip? So the IRS could look at that and say it wasn't necessary because that same training was in your city and you were able to attend. So that's why it is important to understand that. It's important to work with someone that understands your business. And it's important to know the code in your district because there are different tax laws based on court cases and it may have passed in one court case in an area but maybe not in where you live so it is important to understand all of that on ordinary and necessary one item i want to dive deeper into is the home office deduction i know a lot of people hear that they shouldn't take the home home office deduction because it's it will be a red flag for audit, or you may be targeted for audit. That is not the case. A lot of Schedule C's are targeted for an audit. So a Schedule C is you're filing as a sole ship. There's more audits done on Schedule C's, sole proprietorships, because they know a lot of times it's people that are just starting out. They may not be claiming everything properly and Sometimes it's really a hobby and not a true business. So Schedule C's are audited more, but it's not because they're taking a home office. We want to talk about the home office deduction, the internet, taking an internet, internet deduction, what that means, renting your home office to your business. And when I say that, this is a great tax planning tool, especially for the end of the year. We're going to talk about that and turning your backyard oasis into a deduction. First, the home office deduction, we're going to talk about the standard rules. The deduction is allowed if you have net income. That means you have to have a profit in order to take the deduction in the year that you have this loss. If you have a loss 
or these expenses and these deductions, if you have a loss in your business, it's going to roll forward to the next year until you have net income in your business. So it's not loss, but you will not be able to take it in the year that you have a loss. But the requirements for a home office deduction has to be your principal place of business or regularly and exclusively used for administration or management activities. So you can have an office where maybe you meet customers, but you could have a home office as well where you regularly and exclusively use for administrative purposes and management activities. So a lot of people don't understand you could have both. You could have a physical office at a different location and a home office. And we're going to talk about why it's important to have a home office. You can meet your customers or clients at your home office. You can store inventory at your office or your garage. So if you have a garage and half of it is used for storage or inventory or products, take a picture. I would say take a picture of any home office deduction because you never know who and the IRS may require you to prove that you were using this for a home office deduction. Even your, your office, take a picture to show your computer set up, your furniture, your printer, your desk. Also, for your inventory, if you're using your garage for inventory storage, it needs to only be the portion that the inventory is in. So even if you're parking your car in one part of the garage, if you have the other part section where you're storing your inventory, that area deduction. Also, if you use a separate structure on your property exclusively, so maybe you have a little tiny house in your yard and you're using it as your office and it's a separate structure, it's only for your home office, that could also be a deduction. On the home office tax deduction, there's two ways. And the IRS had the actual cost method deduction. And that method was a little bit cumbersome because you had to keep up with a lot of receipts. And it's still used effectively if you have bigger size offices. You can deduct your home insurance, your security system, utilities, internet, telephone, HOA dues, your rent if you're renting, real estate taxes, mortgages, and many more. So cleaning services is another item you could deduct. Make sure that you are keeping track of all of these expenses because there is a way that you have to deduct the home office. If you're an S corp, there is a way. If there's a C, if you're a C corp, there's a different way. And if you're a sole proprietor partnership, there are ways. So you need to work with the tax preparer to know how to deduct the home office. The actual cost method is the original method. In 2013, the IRS started the simplified method because they realized it was a lot of record keeping and you didn't have to worry about keeping up with your expenses anymore. The way the simplified method works is you get to deduct $5 for every square foot that you have, but it's capped at $1,500. So that means your office space, it would be capped at the 300 square feet of space. Also on the simplified method, you cannot carry over those expenses that you could not deduct because you had a loss in your business. So it is good to use the actual method if your business has a loss and you need to carry over those losses um, and the deductions for our, the, the, for the uh, home office until you have net income. That is one reason to use the actual cost method, even though it's more paperwork, it allows you to carry those forward. Now we want to talk about pay yourself rent, take a deduction in your business, and you pay no taxes. That's why it's important to know the tax law, because there are certain loopholes and certain tax codes that are going to allow you to benefit. Let's say it's the end of the year, and it is, and you want to have a Christmas party or a year-end planning event. You can, I'm going to give the example of the S Corp. So this S Corp does not have a home office. He has an office in another location, does not have a home office, but he decides I want to use my house for 14 days 
that's a long planning session, a long party, but you can do it throughout the year. It doesn't have to be consecutive days. You can do two days for a planning meeting and a day for a party. And maybe you had a party for kickoff, you know, meeting at the beginning of the year. But what you would do, you would find out how much it would cost for you to rent the same type of house in your area, everything being the same, comparables for a day of use. In this example, I'm going to say the S Corp found that he could rent the same type of property for 1500 a day. He rents the house, his S Corp pays him 1500 for the rental of his property. He rented it for 14 days. The business owner, S Corp rented from himself for 1500 for 14 days. And that's a 2100 tax deduction for the business. The owner gets that $21,000 and pays no tax on that. You cannot beat this. And this is called the Augusta rule. And a lot of people are talking about it all over Instagram, I see. But a lot of times they're not telling you the facts. So make sure you know the facts and the way to do it properly. You need to reimburse yourself if you're doing it. The S Corp needs to write a check or your business needs to write a check. Uh, you need to document what you're using it for, the time, who it was for, uh, what type of event. So make sure you know the guidelines. It must be your resident. It can include your house, apartment, or condo. If you have a houseboat, it could include that, but it needs to be your resident. You have to document the activity that took place. Again, pay and document a fair rent. So the S Corp is going to pay you. And it could be a home to entertain your patients, your prospects, or your customers awesome tax deduction you can take it before your end we still have 14 days before your end so you could possibly do all 14 days if you have a purpose Katrina I have a quick question that came in through Q&A right on what you're talking about what if I use my whole house as a business how do you answer that between because well, I know you were talking um 300 square feet to 1500 that's the cap Right. So on home office, if you use your home office, if you use the whole house as your business, that means you're not sleeping there. You're not cooking there. You're not eating there. Anytime you're using some type of personal usage, then you're not using the whole house as your business. That's exclusive means that area is exclusive. So you cannot say I'm using my kitchen table as my desk and all of your children are around there at the same time. It has to be an exclusive area. You can have a bedroom and maybe half of your bedroom has your desk and that, you know, your office in it and the other half is your bedroom. But the area that is for business has to be exclusive use. You can't say you have a guest bedroom and then you use it for your office as well, because then that's double dipping. Your guest is uh, using it personally. That's great. Thank you, Katrina. Okay. So for the internet deduction, if you do work at home, you're probably using your home internet. Most people are. Are your monthly internet expenses deductible? Well, maybe. And that's why it's important to know and understand the law. It's different ways to deduct the internet based on the entity that you have. We're going to talk about that. The deduction rules really depends on if you're a sole proprietorship, a corporation, or a partnership. And you can also deduct the use of your home internet, whether or not you claim your home office. So that's important to know. Where business um, businesses have run into trouble really with the IRS is substantiating their internet use. Because we know that if you're at home and you're using your internet, it's probably not 100% used for business. You're probably maybe watching TV or your, your family may be using the internet as well. Um, so ideally, you should keep track of how many times you use your home internet. I know that's overkill. Maybe you just have a log and say, on average, I watch TV four hours a week. And then we could divide the internet or you're using the internet 80% of the time for business. Keeping a simple log, maybe one month and just extrapolate and say, this is consistent of how I use it. That would be good substantiation if you're ever audited by the IRS. Also, Google, Google, and you can find software and apps that will track your internet use. So if your 
interested in really doing that and seeing what you're using on the internet, Google it and you can find different software. But it is important if you are audited, that could be challenged. It has been challenged uh, before in other court cases. Now let's talk about the different ways you deduct the internet. When you operate as a corporation, the corporation reimburses you. You would turn in just like you would if you were an employee of someone else. You are your own employer. So you would turn in an expense report and the company would write you a check. It's a tax-free reimbursement to you and the company would write you a check and the C-Corp deducts that. If you are a Schedule C, so proprietorship, you're going to deduct it on the Form 1040, Line 21. Or if um, that's if you're claiming a home office, if you do not claim the home office, you're going to deduct on Schedule C, Line 25. If you operate as a partnership, you can deduct it as well. There's two different ways. You're going to deduct as unreimbursed partner expense or get reimbursed by your partnership. Again, it's so important to know how to do it and why you do it. And it's important to understand that different entities have different rules on tax deductions. We're going to talk about the big tax break for qualified improvements. Okay, Tiffany, I do want to stop there. Any questions on the internet, home office, or that Augusta rule, 14 days? Great for pausing. Thank you so much. Someone did come in and say, hey, can you repost the slide about renting your home as a deduction? The good news is, is that this webinar is going to be posted. It's being live streamed right now um, through USBC, but you'll be able to see it on YouTube as well. And that is because, Katrina, your slide about renting your home as a deduction was packed full of information. Right. Can you use these for LLCs? You can. You can use them for LLC, LLC filing as a, hopefully we will get to LLCs, but LLC is a state level. The IRS doesn't recognize an LLC. So when you tell me your LLC, you could be an LLC filing as an S corp. So I will never say, well, I won't say I will never say, but usually I'm going to say an S corp, a partnership, a sole prop, or a C corp, because that's how the IRS recognizes LLC. You can choose how you want to be taxed in the LLC. Mm -hmm. So that's important to know. Uh, hopefully we will get to that. If not, we'll do a whole nother webinar on just entity structures and why it's important and which ones um, work well with different tax deductions and business sizes. Thank you. No further questions at the time, Katrina. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So there's a big tax break for qualified improvements to property. So do you own or lease non-residential commercial real property? So I'm talking about you are in an office space that you are renting for your business. We're not talking about you own rental property. We're talking about you're renting commercial property. If so, if you do interior improvements you make to the property, it may be fully deductible in a single year instead of over multiple years. That's huge. Say, for instance, you have a beauty shop and you go in and you do plumbing, you know, you, you do wallpaper, you do um, flooring. That's interior improvements to that property. And you may be able to deduct 100% of that in the first year instead of multiple years. So that was a new change in the IRS law. Before, they would make you allocate it over the life of the lease or the life of the property depreciation. But the IRS changed that and allowed qualified improvements, a big tax break for you. But to be deductible instantly, the improvements must fit into the category that the tax code calls qualified improvement. So what is qualified improvement property? It's improvements to the real property after it's placed in service. So you cannot do it prior to, to you moving in. It's after it's placed in service or after you've moved in. But the Congress wanted to encourage business owners to improve their properties. So in starting in 2018, there was a job cost, um, job, job act, um, the tax code job act. 
and it established a new category of depreciable real estate, which was QIP. And it has a much shorter recovery period um, than the commercial property, which was 15 years. So for tax years 2023, QIP applied for that immediate, it's an 18% bonus depreciation, but then you can also have another type of depreciation. So that's why almost 100% could be deductible in 2023. So if you have that um, improvements in 2023, let's look at that. 2024, the percentage goes down on the bonus depreciation and you still get additional depreciation. So it's important to understand those rules. The type of QIP property that qualifies office buildings or single offices, restaurants or bars, if you have a store, factory or warehouse, strip malls, motel or hotels, and it remember it only applies to non residential property. So improvements to your residential rental property, such as apartment buildings, is not QIP property. Mills is another area of the tax code, which allows business owners to write off 50% of their meals in certain circumstances. And 100% when we're talking about office parties, we need to understand what the rules are. In 2022 and 2021, it was 100% deductible. And the reason that it was 100% deductible is the IRS knew that during COVID, a lot of restaurants were suffering. So 100% deduction was allowed for 2021 and 2022. So if you have not filed your tax return for those years, remember that meals for business are 100% deductible if they come from a restaurant you could take you could have takeout and you can sit in the restaurant 100 percent if you go to a grocery store and you get that would still be 50 percent. so no it has to come from a restaurant the irs was incentivizing the by helping restaurants giving business owners 100 percent deductible meals provided to certain employees for convenience of the employer is 50 percent office parties they remain a hundred percent so on the next slide we're going to give you an overview of the different the different that was happening this is 2021 through 2022 you can percent other meals were 50 if it wasn't at the restaurant and see the changes of what's happening so this is a good slide to take uh, a photo of as well just to see What's deductible? Company picnics and holiday parties, 100%. Um, so just know, Thanksgiving, a lot of people and parties, it could be 100% in your business. Entertainment, the IRS did not allow entertainment to be a deduction anymore. So no tickets to entertainment events, concerts, fishing, plays, but because I do work with entertainers, there may be ways that that's research for them. So that's why it's important to understand, is it necessary and ordinary in your business? Because for them, working with a musician, going to a concert is learning or a production company or filming company going to move. So it really depends on your circumstance. Deep sea fishing, maybe you are a guide for deep sea fishing, then that's different. So you need to understand what's necessary in your business. Also, when all parties are a business development purpose, it's, it's still not a deduction. I see a lot of times when I'm working on quick, and I see the books when I'm preparing taxes, I see lump sums of business development, and then I see tickets. Uh, I see NFL or basketball tickets, and I tell the, the, you know, my client that is not a deduction. Although you've categorized it as that, I'm going to pull it out unless there is some other way you can show me that it is not entertainment. Do note, though, that if you have a meal while you're there, the meal is a deduction. If you're having a concert or you're having a meal at the game, note that you must talk business. You must have a business purpose. 
office. It must be an associate or a prospect. And you need to make sure that you're documenting the conversation, kind of just overview who it is, the purpose, and you have the receipt. That answers a question, um, Katrina, that popped up in the Q&A. With the meals, when I take customers out to eat and spend under $100, will it be considered a tax write-off? You still have to do the 50%. Is that the question? It would be a tax write-off, 50%. It would. 50%. Okay. It doesn't matter how much it is, uh, but you do have to say ordinary and necessary. So I guess if you were to go somewhere and spend $50,000 on one meal, that may seem unnecessary for two people. Right. But yeah, $100, definitely, that's no problem. I mean, more than that, there's not a really a cap on the amount. It's just 50% based on you having the meals. Okay, that was the last question we had with meals. We have a couple of questions and we can save them to the end and come back to them if you want. Um, that have to go back to the home office because we know a lot of us are at home working out of the home, but we can mm -hmm. move on to the, the travel deductions if you'd like. Okay, yeah, we can come back to it. Okay, you want me to ask them to you right now? Uh, no, I'll go through the travel deductions and then we'll Perfect. come back to it. Okay, sounds great. Travel deductions, ordinary and necessary again. So travel would include your hotel stay, your airfare, 50% for meals, that's still 50% even when you're traveling, ground transportation, so Ubers, taxis, limos, and many other deductions. It could be dry cleaning, that's a deduction. But I tell people, don't pack your whole bag with your dry cleaning just so you can get the deduction. <laughs> but dry cleaning is a deduction while you're on the road. Um, one thing I do like to recommend as a little trick is if you have a meeting on a Friday and then you are off Saturday and Sunday and you are not working and then you work again on Monday, that whole hotel stay from uh, Friday to Monday would be a deduction, even though you don't do work on Saturday and Sunday, because it is not a business day, Saturday and Sunday, they're considered weekends, and it would not make sense for you to leave and come back. So all of the airfare would be deducted, all of the hotel would be deducted, that you are conducting business. And a business day means you need to do four hours of business in that day. So you could even do Friday, four hours, eight to 12, take off the rest of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then early Monday, four hours off, and then come back at one o'clock and work. That whole trip would be a deduction for you, except the meals on the days that you are not working. Katrina, how does that go with the rental cars when it says ground transportation? It's the same. The ground transportation, the rental cars, 100% all of the days wow. because they do not expect you to turn the car back in and re-rent it. So the whole rental car would be deduction, would be a deduction. Also, when you have an S Corp and a C Corp, uh, we'll get more into that, you're required to have meetings. So board meetings, company board meetings where you're documenting what your goals are, what you're doing, your decisions. You can have those meetings, corporate meetings in a location and have them for four hours, it's a deduction. If, if your spouse or your friends are part of your board and they're your consultants, then their trips are also deductible because they're part of your business. So that's a good way if you have friends that are enterprising like you and entrepreneurs and you want them to be on your board and great sounding uh, sounding boards for advice, they could be on your board. And then when you all take the trips, it's a deduction as well because it's a business expense. All right, hotels, airfare, this is just a um, broader deduction, ground transportation, tips. We talked about laundry, but tips. So once you're giving tips, a lot of times that's cash. Just write it down on a sheet of paper. I gave tips. Also, special rules relating to traveling by boat. So there are different guidelines if you are traveling by boat. Say if you're on a cruise, 
states, there's different guidelines uh, for business. Cross country drives. If you're going from New York to San Francisco, of course, you got to stop. You're not going to be able to drive the whole way. So those hotels along the way are deductible. And again, four hours of business. So you only have to drive four hours a day for the IRS to say that that's reasonable business travel and the hotels along the way would be deduction and the food. <clears throat> Make sure that you're documenting all of that. Now, it could come up where if you have, you know, your whole family, your children, and you're doing this, the IRS could question that. So just make sure you're documenting what you're doing in your drive. Of course, if you're moving and you're moving offices because you're moving from, say, San Francisco to Dallas, you're moving your office as a business deduction because you are moving your office if you had a home office or if you had an office in a different location. So that's just a whole nother um, set of rules for driving and deductions. Also, international travel has have certain rules on the number of days, like travel days may not be a deduction in some um, in some criteria, travel days could not be, and then the international days have limitations. So you need to understand what's in, what's deductible for travel based on international or domestic. And then also train, it's just regular, it's a deduction just like air flights, but the drives cross country would be something that you would really wanna document. Generally, you don't need to keep receipts for items under $75 unless it's lodging. So business owners, if you go to meals and it's under $75, you don't have to keep the receipt. So if it's on your credit card, that's good enough. You can still deduct it. No receipt is needed if it's under $75, but if it's lodging, you do need that receipt. So in the publication, IRS publication, if you just go to irs.gov, you put in publication 463 you can see the rules on the $75, but document deal required. Just saying, you know, I ate here, it was $75, I ate with this person, but you don't have to have the actual receipt. Also, when you're traveling, there's something called per diem, and it's with the U.S. General Service Administration. They have their own per diem rates. If you go to this website, you'll see that there are certain rates for per diems based on the locations that you travel. You can just pay yourself a per diem for the days you travel and you don't have to keep receipts as well. So that's a good area to look at this website. It allows you to see what's reasonable because what's reasonable in New York is gonna be a lower amount, say in a smaller town and you can pay yourself a per diem or you can just go with the flat rate over the whole year and there's a certain per diem rate where you don't have to worry about tracking every time that you're traveling and where you're going but using these per diem rates are good because this is what the governmental employees use and they've allowed other business owners to use this as well traveling mileage now this is traveling within you don't have to travel uh for a set amount of time now that's the other item that i did not talk about is when you're traveling that travel deduction for hotels is within a certain mileage away from your home so you need to understand that you can't say oh i'm getting a hotel that's 10 minutes away so it's a business trip it has to be a certain mileage away from from your resident in order to, for it to be considered out of town travel. Travel just for everyday travel, going around, running errands for your business, going to meetings, going to lunches, going to seminars. That mileage rate is 65.5 cents per business mile, effective January 1st, 2023. The IRS adjusts this mileage to better reflect the increase in fuel price. They've also decrease this rate at times when the mileage and uh, the gas has gone down they decrease the mileage rate but right now the rate is 65.5 cents there's an app called mile iq and you can use that app when you get in the car you turn it on you swipe left or right if it's business it's one way and it will track your miles for you and you would have a nice report at the end of the year to show the business miles so mile iq you can look, 
look that up. And I believe there's an app in QuickBooks as well, if you have QuickBooks that does mileage tracking. Uh, so just Google those two are the ones that I know about, and I'm sure there are others that are available. It is not too late. If you need a car, I don't say, say go get one just because you get a tax deduction. But if you need a car, you can purchase a SUV, a crossover vehicle, or a van on or before December 31st, 2023. And it could be new or used. It has to be over gross vehicle weight of 6,001 pounds. But you get a bonus depreciation of 80%. And section 179 expenses of up to 28,900. The good thing about using this deduction is the depreciation is on a five year table and there's no luxury limits on the vehicle because some vehicles, when they're luxury, you lose some of the deduction. With the SUV and crossover vehicle, you can have an expensive uh, luxury. SUV, a crossover, a Range Rover, Mercedes, or BMWs, and you're not subject to those luxury limits. I want to give you an example. You buy a 100,000 SUV. Okay, it does meet the gross vehicle weight of 6,080 pounds. So it's right over the limit. A lot of auto manufacturers know the limit, and they know how to get it right over the limit so you can take the deduction. It's a big deal for them. You will be allowed to use, uh, I mean, you are using it 90% for business. So what you need to recognize is you need to, you do need to track how much you're using for business. You buy the company, you buy the car in your business, but you still need to track. If you, you don't use it 100% for business, that's all right. But you must use it at least 50% or more for business. In this case, they use it 90% for business. The write-off could look like this. First, you get that 28,900 section 179 depreciation I talked about. Then you get the bonus to 48,880. You're going to get 2,440 and 20% micros depreciation. That's another depreciation. So the write off for this $90,000 car in the first uh, year, you're using it 90%, could be as high as $80,000 write off know the tax laws is benefiting business owners but you need to know how to maximize and use it to your benefit so watch out for 2026 these laws were started a lot of them when trump did the the rewriting of the tax code but in 2026 a lot of these laws are going to go back so we may have entertainment again the meals may be 100%. We don't know what's going to happen, but in 2026, these laws will expire and the legislative have to vote again to say if we're going to keep them, they're going to change. So this is going to be another opportunity to just stay abreast of what's happening and what's coming up in 2026. All right, so that is the part related to deductions and I can ask questions about deductions and then we can go into what time is it oh well we may not have time uh we can go into a little bit into the entity structure that's great uh quick check-in for questions would my social media fall under internet your social media so social media if you are advertising and you are marketing that's going to fall under marketing 100 percent. so when you say social media so many different aspects of it if you're working on social media and you're saying you're using your internet for social media then yes it falls under, under internet so anytime you're on you're working on social media that's business yes but if you're talking about social media paying someone to do your your social media or hire your kids to do your social media we didn't talk about hiring your children but i know a lot of uh, younger people are very good with technology. You can hire your children. That's a whole nother uh, tax strategy that I'll talk about in future webinars. Hiring your children, hiring your family that, that are your dependents and get that right off. That's great. You hit the point because it was advertising on YouTube, Facebook, et cetera. So that would fall under marketing. That would fall under marketing. 
100 percent. you don't have to worry about trying to keep track of the internet that's 100 percent deduction for business okay that's great i have a home-based business i am getting a new roof gutters new carpet new doors can i deduct all of those expenses this year so what you would do is you would do a percentage if you're okay depends on your structure if you're a sole proprietorship an s corp or a c corp in a c corp your business pays you rent and then all those deductions reduce the rent so you don't have to pay taxes or it, it lowers your taxes and an s corp your company reimburses you for the expenses and you can do a percentage so if your house is a 2,000 square feet and you have 100 office, then that's 10%. Well, did I do 2,000? Okay, so then you would have a certain percentage. Just say if it's 2,000 um, square feet and you have 200 square foot, I mean 200 yeah, square, square foot office, then that's 10%. So you would take 10% of those because that's your overall house. You wouldn't be able to do the whole thing. But if you in your office, if it's exclusive use and you do carpet in that room, get a separate invoice from the person laying the carpet or the flooring. That would be 100%. If you're building shelves in that room, it's 100%. So there are things that are direct expenses if they're in the office, and then they're indirect expenses. So like the roof is indirect. Other parts of the house could be indirect, but anything you're doing within the office, get a separate receipt um fixtures if you're doing blinds building shelves you know everything in that office would be 100 percent direct expense but remember you, you have to have a net profit in your business or it's going to roll forward what is a good tool to use to keep our receipts in order katrina other than taking a picture of them do you have any recommendations that you like uh, Expensify, that's one, I, they've changed their name, I don't know, but if you look up Expensify, you, you do take a picture, but then it uploads and it can sync to QuickBooks. QuickBooks also has an option where you take a picture and it uploads into uh, your software. I like, uh, if well, this is what I do and I recommend for my clients, if you use a debit card or if you use a credit card, and you download all of that data into your tax software, your accounting software, and you code that to know, like if you're going to a restaurant, you can code it within the QuickBooks or the accounting software to say who you're with, what you discuss. So it's all inside of QuickBooks. But if you snap the receipt, then you can attach that receipt to that transaction as well. So I love just having all of the data together, paperless. Um, we are a paperless office. We've been paperless for a long time. Even before COVID, we were, we were Zooming before people knew about Zoom. So I do like having less paper, especially when you're in home office. It just gets to be too much. Uh, the IRS requires you to keep your documents and they could go back and audit you for uh, seven years for certain certain types of um, inquiry. So make sure you have that for seven years. That's another area that you need to understand is how long do you need to keep your records and your tax returns? That's right. That's right. I There was a question that came up earlier when you were talking about home office post COVID, right? Um, I know a lot of people that work from home nine to five, but they're also business owners. Mm -hmm. How how do they calculate, strategize um, their taxes when writing off where they're sitting for their nine to five and where they're also functioning as the business owner? Yeah, that's a difficult uh, situation because if you have a one desk and you're using it for both, I would say that I'm using it as a percentage. Mm -hmm. So I would I would document that and say it's the same space, but I'm using it this percentage for uh, business. That's perfect. And then we're coming up on time here. Um, I want to give a shout out because I have a question, Katrina, but I also have some comments. This is so helpful. How can we obtain the use of your services? And Katrina is dynamite. Please keep having her come back and do these webinars. If you are on this webinar right now, that means you registered through the Eventbrite link. 
I've also emailed you before this email all of Katrina's um, contact information, and you definitely um, should reach out to her because Katrina, what are you offering those that reach out to you for the first time? Yeah, so we're having a discovery call, and I work with business owners that I, I work a lot in the creative space. So people who are in content creation, um, multifaceted entrepreneurs who like to start businesses and you know sell them. I work with artists, entertainers, um, digital creators, course creators. Uh, marketers, event promoters. So people that are really in the creative space, I do work with dentists and medical as well, but right now I'm focusing a lot on just the creator, creator economy. I just love that space. I'm a creator myself, so I have courses and um, I'm just loving that space and it's growing. It's such a big space and it provides people opportunities to start businesses at a low entry point. So I, I love that. So I'm offering a discovery call. There's a form. It just asks you some questions and then I'll direct you which way, you know, works best through a group coaching. I'm starting a free community um, that you can join and you can just ask tax questions and it's on school. Uh, that's a networking platform. And um, there's just different ways to work with me. I love that. And I have one more question. Would hiring an influencer, Katrina, fall under marketing as well? it does okay mm -hmm. because you're paying them to help market your products so that's just like a model if you pay a model you're paying an influencer to help market that's it, it does. that's it well how smart of you to know that you had so much information that you've already set up your next webinar how do people figure out how to watch your next webinar okay look, we're gonna scroll so through. yeah <laughs> okay how much time oh we have seven minutes yeah so I'm going to do a little quick quiz just to see how well people retained. So we're okay. going to play a game. Is it a deduction or is it not a deduction? So if you think it's a dedu deduction, put on in the chat. And if you don't think it's a deduction, put no. A pro bodybuilder used body oil to make his muscles glisten in the lights during his competition. He deducted buffalo meat and special vitamin supplements to enhance his strength and muscle development. Do you think this, this is a real case? Do you think they allowed him this deduction? So put your answers in there. So the answer is yes and no. It was a kind of trick question. They allowed him to deduct the body all. They did not allow him to deduct the buffalo meat. But they did allow him to deduct this to deduct the special vitamin. So you have to know again your industry and what case law has allowed. Okay, I just had some other little um, questions that I was going to ask. Again, I left my my job in 2002 as a W two owner. I started a certified public accounting company, but I also have craft entertainment CFO where I work with creators and entertainers. Um, and so that's um, that company. This was talking about the right entity. So that's going to be on the next webinar. And this was an example of how I saved someone $29,000 in a tax strategy. Okay. A disclaimer again. And then, oh, that's yours. Let me see. Okay, right here. So end of tax year business checklist. If you go to this link, katrinamcraft.com, links dash Katrina, that's how you sign up for, I do uh, three times a week, I send out different tax tips. I'll send out my articles and I'll show you how you can get into my coaching courses and then also my community. And you can find me on IG, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn at Katrina M. Craft. I know I follow you on social media and I get your tips all the time. I yeah, on Instagram and LinkedIn. Thank yes, you. Yes, I see you always <laughs> like them. Thank you. <laughs> well, I love your enthusiasm for tax preparation. It's one of the most important things as a business owner and you don't make me feel um anxious about it. You don't make me feel overwhelmed about it. Um and that is the best type of teacher and coach for me personally. Thank you. I, I enjoy 
enjoyed teaching. I just enjoyed giving back my knowledge. I know business ownership is difficult in itself. And so taxes is one less thing I want people to stress about, get misinformation from. There's a lot of misinformation on IG and Facebook out there. So I want you to have the proper information and back it up with the code. That's it. Katrina, so they need to follow you on your social media to understand when you're having your upcoming webinars. Anyone on the call, you're going to know when USBC has Katrina back on. Um, we're going to be broadcasting this webinar again on our YouTube channel in the next one to two weeks. Um, and how can they how can they know your next webinar by following you on social media, Katrina? Yes, on social media, but it's going to be on November 15th at 12 o'clock so okay. you can lock it in if you go to this link and enter your email and name there's a place where it says i want tax tips enter there and you will be notified about the next webinar anything that i'm doing you know sometimes i just say i want to talk to a business owner and help them so i may just put that out there one day because it helps me know what people are struggling with and i can make better webinars better products and better coaching. Katrina, thank you. We can go ahead and stop the share and pull up the closing slides as we're moving to the top of the hour. We want to thank everyone on the call today uh, for attending Maximizing Tax Savings for Small Medium Businesses Essential Strategy Strategies webinar. Ah, this was possible through our work with the SBA Navigator pilot program funded in part through a grant with the U.S. Small Business Administration. A tremendous thank you always to you, Katrina M. Kraft, CPA and financial advisor, and thank you to our community navigator. Navigator Chambers for advocating for Black businesses, and to you, of course, our viewers, for sharing in the discussion. You guys were having that Q&A chat on fire. We appreciate it. It makes it fun. USBC introduced by Black, the only Black certification program with a business directory providing businesses that certify access to private and public procurement opportunities, highlights, and other benefits. This online program can help prepare you for the contracting space as documents preparation guides. Certify today by going to usblackchambers.org forward slash certification. We invite you to give us your feedback on today's session. Just scan the QR code or type in, the QR code was in a slide previous, but you can also type in, oh, thanks, Warren, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.surveymonkey.com forward slash R forward slash biz future. Join us for upcoming events by visiting usblackchambers.org forward slash webinars to register for our um, topics. Coming up, we have on November 9th at 2 p.m. East Coast time, Chase ABE Equity, Unlock the Secrets to Long-Term Value. On November 10th at 1 p.m. East Coast time, we have our monthly live webinar, Buy Black Us platform for Black-owned businesses. And then finally, November 14th, we have Increase Your Sales with Google Tools. That's going to be at 1 p.m. East Coast time. Follow us on social media at usblackchambers.org. And if today's forum prompted any additional questions and interests, feel free to contact us at programs at usblackchambers.org. We really appreciate you joining us today. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you.